right now. You can take it, pass it on anywhere you, you go, a restaurant, bathroom, wherever, so that people can come here and hear the truth about what's going on in our world. The study is called Klaus Schwab Eugenics and the Rise of the Nephilim. Um, and so, you know, many churches don't talk about these topics, and people are left wondering what in the world is going on. Um, left lost uh, about transhumanism, the whole debacle that we've been going through for the last three years, um, and other, other um, topics as well. And Nephilim is a subject that was hidden for a while, and now it's made a resurgence. So, hey, pick up the flyer, pass it out, and help people to come here and learn the Word of God and what's going on in our world. Well, if you're new here, my name is Chris Taylor. I'm a deacon. I'm an intern here. I go to Bible college, and I'm just standing in for Pastor Billy. He'll be back soon. So this week and next week, we'll be touching on this subject of Babylon. But before we get to that, um, sorry there. Boom. All right. So my ministry is called Don't Let Them Burn. All right. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just ask you to cover this message and to give people encouragement and not fear about the topic that we're about to get into. Please help this message move in hearts and minds and so that other conversations could be had. You are the only name worthy under heaven and earth to be praised, and we're just glad that you moved on our hearts when you did to take us out of hell and uh, into a relationship with you um, in this pagan world that we're thrusted into at birth, and you had a plan the whole time. No matter what we suffer, any tribulation, you still had a plan, and that was through your son, Jesus Christ. We just thank you and praise you. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. And so, uh, on my program, we talk about Hollywood and tech, uh, paranormal stuff, superheroes, politics, symbology, uh, Bible prophecy. We even talk about video games and the, one of the weirdest topics out there, UFO, the, the type of deception uh, that's going on with it. And so, here's a intro. To you ready? ready? Yeah. Yeah. All right. This is Chris from Don't Let Them Burn. Let me tell you what it's all about. Our first goal is to spread the gospel of Jesus Christ to a lost and dying world through media. Our second goal is to expose the works of darkness, starting with entertainment, a device the devil uses to control your mind and soul. We also get into Bible prophecy, world events, the occult, UFOs, and other weird subjects. Why? Because these are the subjects that are interwoven into a lot of your entertainment. It's in your music, your video games, your reading materials, like comic books. You know, I love them comic book movies, right? Do you really want to know the truth about some of these subjects and how to protect yourself and your families? Then subscribe now and follow us on social media for all updates. We got a big year planned for y'all with some guests that'll blow your minds with their professional insights on how everything connects in the last days. Don't let them burn. And the name simply means spread the gospel. Don't let people burn. Don't let them go to hell. Give them a chance. And don't burn if you're not saved, you know? This is uh, all the social media platforms I'm on. Uh, in our Telegram, we have a public channel where we give away resources, uh, daily news updates, and sometimes we're like a month ahead of the news cycle. So you want to check us out there. You can access that through our YouTube channel, through the Facebook group, and uh, my Twitter. Check out my Twitter. And again, that's all the... Uh, I'm on Rumble, BitChute, all these places you can find me. We just opened a Rockfin channel. And so there we go. As we are working on a few documentaries, I have a book coming out. I'll announce that when the time comes. All right, so today's topic is Babylon, the church, and the five crowns. The church and the five crowns will be discussed next week. Today it's all about Babylon. Uh, old Babylon and believe it or not, new Babylon. So we'll look at the old and the new. And some say all roads lead back to Rome. Others say all roads lead back to Egypt. But ultimately, all roads lead back to Babylon because it was the start of the first one world government. Right? And so we're dealing with a, consp uh, a, a a spiritual conspiracy 
And a conspiracy is defined as an agreement to perform together an illegal, wrongful, or subversive, some subversive act, a group of conspirators, an agreement between two or more persons to commit a crime or accomplish a legal purpose through illegal action. So it's not conspiracy theory, but we are talking about a conspiracy. And again, it's from the spiritual realm, right? And so after the flood, about 150, 200 years, uh, we have the Tower of Babel. To the left there is Nimrod, a depiction of him. And uh, this is located on the plain of Shinar in Mesopotamia. And the Bible is mostly, a lot of the events are lo in, in the locale of the, the Middle East. Not all, but mostly. And so the Bible records that this great city, uh, as a destination for rebellion against God, the, the rise of a post-flood occult resurgence of witchcraft, the known world was communicating under one language. As a result, they went forward with a plan to reach heaven and make a name for themselves under the leadership of a man that transformed into a mighty hunter before God, Nimrod, a type of antichrist. God in his wisdom confounded the people by creating languages so they couldn't globally communicate so easily. That has kept the global flood of sin from actively rising rapidly for the last several thousand years. Later, we see the statue of King Nebuchadnezzar, which outlined the future kingdoms of the world. And now we're headed back to the idea of Babel. So before the exodus, the people of God were sheltering in Egypt under the pharaoh of Joseph's time, avoiding the great seven-year famine, it became their temporary home for 400 to 430 years. They endured enslavement under the next pharaoh. Uh, it took God Almighty to set his people th free through Moses and Aaron. A uh, depiction of e Egypt there. Oh, and God actually, through uh, the plagues and everything, was battling the gods of Egypt, the ten gods that they worshipped, the frog god and all this other stuff, the storm and all this. And... Uh, there's a depiction of what it could have looked like. And again, the Hebrew, the Israelite people were under slavery, and God used Moses to take them out of that. That's there, the crossing of the sea, Red Sea. And then they, the people of God, went through exiles through Babylon, Persia, Greece, and Rome invaded. And these uh, dispersions had to do with the judgment of God according to the disobedience of his people, right? But we also had before that Abraham, which was a Chaldean. The Chaldeans were uh, located in the place of Babylon. So it's kind of weird how God took one of them out to later on in Revelation to destroy the city. So it, it took a, a, a descendant of Babylon, made a people out of them, and that same people, you know, it's become prophetical in, in um, the, the end days. The end days are mostly about the, uh, the Jewish people, not the church. Uh, two separate plans there for, from God. Uh, Israel is God's wife. The church is Jesus' bride. Two different distinctions. Okay? And so we have Moses there. We have the Exodus we have the golden calf that Aaron uh, allowed to be made because the people were grumbling, like, where's Moses? Ah, well, you know, and God was actually going to destroy them, but Moses prayed for them or pleaded with God about, for them, and God relented his hand. And so, again, the golden calf, this is a depiction of the dispersion of Babylon. And so here... In Babylon, we have Daniel chapter 2, David through God, Nebuchadnezzar is given the interpretation of his terrifying dream about the famine. Sorry, yeah, he got a dream about the famine, and then also he has this dream about the statue, which um, his, his kingdom was Babylon, then they got invaded by the Medes and the Persians, and then from there, the Greeks took over, and from there, the Romans 
uh, took over in their empire. Then we have the two legs there, which is a divided Rome, which still exists. It never went away. It just reduced in power. Um, and now it's gaining power again. And then from there, we have the, the, the ten toes, which are ten kingdoms, which are again talked about in the book of Revelation. We have ten kings, and I think three of them will uh, get put down, and that's another story. So the same statue, a rock is carved out, which is Jesus Christ, and he comes to destroy the kingdoms, okay? And they'll never stand again. And so idolatry is pretty much exalting anything that has worthiness, like God, respect, reverence, paid to a divine being, from Old English um, words, worship. Uh, synonyms are adulation, deification, hero worship, which we see today, not just with the superheroes, but with other things too, idolatry, idolization, and worship, worshiping. So Marduk is the moon god that the Babylonians worship. The moon god was worshipped more than the sun god. Today it's all everybody's talking about the sun god, the sun god. So it was about the moon god. So the moon god was also Molech, uh, a horse was the sun god, and Baal was a little bit of both. So this goes into many different origins, Mesopotamia, Canaanites, Hittites, and other civilizations. And Baal, or Baal, is the correct pronunciation, is the prince and the power of the air. He is the lord of the flies. He is the storm god. He is Satan and uh, a thousand other names, just like his female counterpart, which we'll go into in a little bit. How it relates today goes all the way to Wall Street and other places. And we'll get to that. And so again, we have Moses. Pay attention to the cow there. It's gold. It has the disc on his head, which is usually a sign of divinity or what's called the nimbus, the shining thing around the head there. And the, 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 the horns are the crescent. And we're going to see many depictions of this as we go. And there we have Isis from Egypt and a better look at the calf and how it's worshipped um, by through figurines and, you know, bowing down to these things. Like uh, they'll say in Jeremiah that what Jeremiah was talking about was a Christmas tree, but it wasn't. It was one of these things. You cut it down, you fashion it and put it gold and silver on it. That's what he was talking about, not a Christmas tree. So this is Molech and Baal, and sometimes Molech is shown as an owl or something else, some other beast. They change uh, appearances through different cultures. Uh, sometimes Baal, Molech, Mar Marduk, whatever, is sometimes a female, sometimes a male, sometimes uh, animal, uh, human animal, animal hybrid. We'll see some of that in a minute. Uh, this is from the Freemasons, it's, his name is Ja Bulan, it's a false trinity, and through our cultures, you have many false trinities that are, that are depicted, I can't show all of them here, because so many, uh, and there was a movie that came out in the middle 2000s called Zeitgeist, what Zeitgeist means is the spirit of the age, okay? And so they were saying that through all these cultures, we see these trinities, we see these resurrections, and the, and the, and the sacred child, and the death and resurrection, all that, right? Uh, but Satan loves to confuse the minds. So that's why people are like, why are there so many religions? Eh, how can we just have one that's right? Uh, but there's only one God, not 3,000 or 33,000 or 2 million, you know? And so this Jabulon is Baal. He's depicted as a frog and a, a little Christmas uh, Santa Claus looking dude uh, riding on a crab. And there's the other one that he is depicted is, is third part of his false trinity as a cat. I don't know why it's a cat, but, you know, I love cats. <laughs> and there, there is another representation of Jabulan or Baal, Baal, and he's riding a beast. Sounds familiar? And there, next he's depicted as a goat, just like Satan, and then there's the bull again. What's up with this bull, this sacred calf? Um, the, the idol there next to him is Baal again. 
This is Molek. I believe this was in Europe. A few years back, they, depict, they um, erected this thing, uh, and there was backlash, but people were like shocked that this pagan worship is coming back. This is uh, Sir Nanus. He's one of the environmental gods. Same person, different culture. Um, that's where the Hedron Collider gets his name, CERN. Okay? Um, a lot of the nature worship, Gaia worship, Mother Earth, Mother Nature, a thousand different names. This is where the um, green movement comes from and some of the environmental movement. Uh, you know, it's good to take care of the environment. There are corporations that are purposefully destroying the earth. But God says in Revelation, the book of Revelation, that he will take revenge on those that destroy the earth. You find that for yourself. And so when you hear the Green New Deal, uh, people that believed in this stuff, Hitler believed in this stuff too, and a lot of other dictators, they believed in the Green Movement. Uh, it's just not taught in schools. We're, we're not taught to, not taught, but encouraged to read history. And that's why we're in a problem. That's one of the reasons why we're in the problem we're in now. And so this is a Marvel Comics depiction of Odin, who is also Sunanus, the stag god. That's why he has the horns. And next there you see him, uh, his full form there, like Pan, with the, the goat legs and all that stuff, right? And the, the marble. And so we have a human-animal hybrid. And some of the pictures, I, used, I had to leave out a lot of stuff because it was getting very, very, very sexual. And these are fertility gods or fertility goddesses, okay? This is Thor from the Marvel Comics. He is Baal. He is Baal. He rides the rainbow bridge, which is the bridge to Lucifer. Uh, when you hear the animal rainbow bridge, it's the same bridge. It's, it was also uh, put into the homosexual community to, as a sign for the New Agers to know who's involved. This is Hancock. Uh, Will Smith played Hancock, and he is Horus. He's a sun god. Uh, they, they don't tell you right out, but the eagle on his hat is a symbology from Egypt, and he also gets his power from the sun. Sun symbolism is a big thing with Horus. Superman, he's a false Christ. We talked about that before, and he gets his power from the sun. So he's also a depiction of Horus and a mixture of other things. Then we have the movie Gods of Egypt, which also depicted uh, another reality, but with Horus. So this is uh, Molech again, and you see him as a cow. This is the god of abortion, also with Baal. They're the god of abortion. The people used to burn their, send their kids into the fire and uh, sacrifice. And what you see today is the government's trying to get to, to abort children after they're born. All abortion is wrong, but they would already have their children and toss them into the fire to this god for whatever blessing. And so, again, he's also depicted as an owl, as you see there in number two, picture number two, the middle. Um, and then you have the, the Egyptian version over there. This is in Islam. You have the crescent moon. Please pay attention to these symbols. They're very important for you to understand where we're going with this. The crescent moon, the sun god, the moon god, the nimbus, and stars and stuff. This is, anybody recognize who's in the middle there? Yes, yes, Beyonce. She is a Baal worshiper, okay, along with her husband. And the two statues next to her is um, Isis. We'll get to them again in a minute. And so in the Roman Catholic, we have the Eucharist. The Eucharist is the living, it's not like communion. It's the living flesh of Jesus that you eat. Okay, that's what that's the symbolism of it. Okay, and so we have the crescent moon there again. This is Baal worship. Also, cannibalism comes from the Canaanites. Cannibalism. Okay, you can look up the etymology of that. Um, and then Islam, we have the crescent moon and the star. So it's kind of a mixture of moon worship and moon goddess worship, sun worship, and all that stuff. Then we get to let me make sure I'm not moving ahead of myself here. All right. <laughs> so 
uh, Baal is uh, also the dead and rising God. He is uh, also Tammuz, Horus, and Baal. And so there's a mythology that comes with all of this, which I'll get to in a second, why it's a, this false trinity. So anybody recognize where that's from? All right, so this is a, a depiction of uh, Baal, <laughs> but they, it, it's, a, it's a, luck, a symbol of luck, okay? And they had a, a, a ceremony one time where they gathered outside to put their hands on the bull to get a blessing from it. So this is idol worship. So in this article here, this is from the Jewish, um, Jewish School of Theology. Okay? So they say, uh, according to the artist's website, it was designed as a symbol of virility and courage and the perfect antidote to Wall Street crash, the Wall Street crash in 1986. But it was also created without the, uh, without the invitation of the Wall Street community and was properly removed from its original location in front of the New York Stock Exchange. The charging bull was eventually embraced by traders, traders as totem, as a totem and source of good luck. Its golden predecessor, however, was ground to dust. The image of a bull was a common depiction of gods in the ancient Near East, but our parasha, or the word, uh, uh, could not be clearer in rejecting it. The observation of the word. Glistening, muscular, dynamic, and intensely animal, charging bull has an allure that is undeniable and the sculpture seems a fitting mascot for the highly charged financial business of its neighborhood. It sheds light on why such a creature was once a symbol for a mighty god and invites us to speculate as to why such an image was so adamantly disowned by the Torah. All right? All right, what's the article? Okay, so next we're going to find out. I'm from, I migrated from Florida eight years ago, and this is what came to my hometown. Wall Street is coming to South Florida. Miami now getting its very own charging bull statue, reminiscent of the iconic one at the heart of New York City's financial district. But this new statue does include glowing laser eyes, often used by crypto enthusiasts on social media. Miami Mayor Francis Suarez was there for the unveiling of this 11-foot, 3,000-pound statue and says the future of finance is in Miami. We're going to be the aggregation of capital center of the world and the deployer of capital center of the world. So we're going to, if you want to build and scale a company, you're going to come here to Miami. It's going to create jobs across America because we now, because through remote work, have the ability to create jobs here that are going to impact the quality of life of Americans in places where maybe the qual uh, cost of living is a little bit lower. The unveiling happening at the Miami Beach Convention Center. That's where the 2022 Bitcoin conference is underway now. After today, though, the Miami Bull will be relocated to its permanent home on the Miami-Dade College campus. All right. So as far as Bitcoin goes, no one knows who created it. And some are speculating that it was artificial intelligence. That's beside the point. Uh, the point here is they're erecting a bull. They, they said what he said he wanted to be the financial center of the world. Um, so this Babylonian system is coming back. And I don't believe everyone knows what they're doing, you know, but I'm pretty sure some others do. Then around 2016 and onward, they were erecting arches of Baal in, in New York and around the world. And it was a great move. But see, we're dealing with a, a neo-pagan, um, <sighs> sorry, <laughs> a rise of neo-paganism. And... We had the Burning Man, we had Paganicon, we had all these occult pagan uh, rituals going on while no one was paying attention. And it wasn't just here in Nevada. It started to go to Canada and Europe. It was getting massive following because witchcraft and the occult is the fastest growing religion in America and in other places, right? So when you have stuff like Dianic witchcraft and stuff, it, it spawns from this whole Babylonian system. All right, so the next video I'm going to play is the second half of a video that's 20 minutes long. The first half I'll show later. This second half has to do with what we're talking about right now, which is Baal worship. And the context of, of the ceremony 
is Babylon, but they kind of merge it with the financial district in, this, in Europe. And so when you hear them talking, you're going to hear about the financial and, and all, fourth industrial Re revolution and all that stuff. But uh, it's quite disturbing. There we go. As the beat pounds to remind us of the relentless drive of industry, they drag into the Alexander Stadium. A beast, a bull, 10 meters high, heavily armored. Tonight we're telling the story about how Birmingham is connecting us with every corner of the world and with one another. It's been a dark period in our lives, but tonight we're going to sprinkle a little stardust on the ceremony. The death of a star in the outer universe and the shards of light from its demise are heading straight the for us. Breaks free and causes pandemonium. And in a parallel act of emancipation, the women Here break their own chains. Well named. Bulls were baited and sold here in the city century for centuries. And his armoured mask features the names of the chain makers embossed upon it no, from those dark hurt, days. But I'm told that the birth of a star can trigger the birth of other stars. And I reckon this one is going to do just that. Here's a reminder of our common ancestry. And so who now can we'll come from in the world? Not Jimmy Lennon, she's escaped she in her balloon. Hopes and dreams. It's no doubt going to be up to Stella and the Dreamers to try and halt the bull. The Dreamers have stayed. Of darkness. And they are about to offer we compassion to a very scared life. icon of this city. Sending out the call to gather from the Alexander Stadium. Choreographed with percussionist Abraham Paddy Tede. That's him at the top of the tower. Birmingham's Tower of Babel, or Tower of Birmingham, so if you like, is rising in the city of the show so far. Waters and towpaths. There are around 35 miles of canals here. Its waterway is a key part of the development in the Industrial Revolution. You know, the shards of beacons of hopes and dreams were inspired by our conversation with Kadar Abduhali. Well, for the last two years, we've been locked down in our houses, our villages, our cities, and our countries. Now we can travel again and meet up in new neighborhoods. In fact, we're building a new neighborhood here. How's this for a courtyard of the Commonwealth? Two houses, Stella and 71 other dreamers are brought from around the world, around the Commonwealth, to Birmingham, Stella representing the 72 to nation. call for a moment of reflection and reconciliation. So you want to go into your Bibles and look up the 72 nations, look up the, the um, Council of God, and you'll find some interesting things there. Um, they'll mention the 72 nations later. Uh, these crystals are shards are from a fallen star, fallen angel, you know. They know what they're doing. And you, you, mentioned, you, you heard in the video there, she mentioned the Tower of Babel and how this is similar to that, right? So we're in a neo-pagan resurgence. All right. So this book is called The Two Babels. My presentation is not based on this book whatsoever. I have it in my position, but I've never read it. The reason I'm mentioning this is because there's discrepancy between um, the, the, his idea, Alexander Hislop, was that uh, the Roman Catholic Church was Babylon, but there's discrepancies and arguments, and this, you know, this doesn't, <laughs> what I'm about to say kind of, is kind of in the book, 
but it's not based on this book, okay? And I'm, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to show you in a second. All right, so now we have Astaroth, the queen of heaven, Isis, worship, and she goes by a thousand other names. And again, Mesopotamia, Canaanites, and more civilizations. So Samaramis, who is also Astaroth, queen of heaven, it did exist. Uh, they, in the story, they say she was the wife of Nimrod. But she did exist, but she didn't exist at the time of Nimrod. And so the mythology was built, but this mythology is all over the globe, and we're going to see that in a second. And so uh, a lot of historians say she wasn't the wife of Nimrod. So the mythology that spawned from Babylon to Egypt and other civilizations kind of goes like this. Nimrod and Samaramis got married. Nimrod died, and then Samaramis had a son called Tammuz. This in the Bible, you hear about them weeping for Tammuz. This is the, the false god. And this is where you pass out the Easter bun. Um, you eat the pig. This is where it comes from. All right? And uh, Isis, Osiris, and Horus in, in Egyptian myth is the same story. Right? So Tammuz is supposed to be the resur not resurrected, reincarnated image of Nimrod. And so the mother... Samaramis, or Isis, started to have an ancestral relationship with her son. He got killed by a pig. That's why you eat the pig. And they spread his parts around the, the, um, the land, and she went to go dig, dig, dig up the parts, but she couldn't find one part. And this part is the male sexual organ, or what's called a phallus. And this is where you get the Washington Monument and different depictions in, the, the, in Mas Ma Freemasonry and in Egypt. It's a big thing. And, uh, and so this is also where we get the myth about soulmates because she couldn't get that sexual part. So when she finds it, she becomes mated with him again. That's where soulmate okay and so until she does that nothing will happen and uh the picture i showed earlier about hancock that was what the movie was all about he couldn't get with this uh person that called himself that she said they call us angels and this and that but they could not get together in the movie because she couldn't find the thing okay <laughs> all right <laughs> so all right we, we passed the raging bull and so now we're going to get into all this, what's called the mother and child cult. All right. This cult has spawned many variations since that time. God confounded, that God confounded the languages as people separated into their different groups and spread out across the planet. They took the story with them, which spawned variations in Rome, Greece, Egypt and Phoenicia. Just like how you'll find many depictions of Noah's flood around the globe, because everybody knew it was true. We didn't have to think and worry if it's evolution or God created the planet and he, and he, and he, um, he destroyed the, the Noah civilization at the time. Eight people on a boat. Uh, they might not say Noah, but they'll say his name in their own language. Now, we have the Phoenicians and all these civilizations that capture the false idol worship of the mother and child. In these days of prophetic significance, we see a rise in worship or <coughs> adoration of the false mother. And so we're going to show some historical examples of the mother cult, sometimes just the mother. Uh, and their, na their names are, again, she has a thousand names, just like Baal does, Samaramis, Minerva in the Romans, Venus, Astarte, Isis, Ishtar, Inanna, Astaroth, Shiva, Diana, remember Diana, uh, Queen of Heaven, you'll find that one in your Bible, um, Black Madonna, and Statue of Liberty, Lady Liberty, Libertas, Victoria, or Nike, uh, the goddess of victory. Okay, so all these names, and we see the mother and child cult even in the Hittites in the Bible. Uh, the fallen angels have repackaged the same lie along with some uh, the demonic powers that come with it. And so let's get into some examples. 
And so again, there we have the crescent moon. Diana is the, the hunter goddess. You'll see her also depicted with the moon on her head and a bow and arrow. Um, she's a very violent goddess. Um, uh, another depiction of her is called Lilith. I don't have a, a picture here of that. Lilith is another violent one, very sexual, and on and on it goes with the same um, motif. And so, again, these are tame, more tame pictures, but as you can see, we have the human-animal hybrids and all the symbology there with the owl and whatnot. Uh, the one to the left there is the one that the Ephesians would worship. And again, it gets very sexual. You got the big hips, you got the, you know, the breast and all that. Uh, so late liberty. You guys noticed that right away, right, from the movies? Columbia, she, the torch is very important, right? So we have the torch, and they're not hiding it. It's right there. It's called hidden in plain sight because most people... Uh, don't study mythology. They practically don't care anyway. Um, then we have Statue of Liberty. We got Sol Invictus and uh, some other ones. And uh, the Statue of Liberty wasn't made for America. It was made for Egypt, and they, they rejected it, and it came to America. So Liberty Island stands in idol. This is called the Queen of Heaven. This is not Mary. Mary is not to be deified in any case, but it is the Queen of Heaven. So uh, the Catholic Church, or Roman Catholic Church, ruled civilization for about 1,500 years, and they would assimilate the traditions of the, the places that they would, they would conquer. And so that's why you see voodoo mixed with the Catholicism and other places, same exact uh, motif. Um, and uh, of course, we're, we're paying attention right now to the mother and child. There it is. So people would think that's Jesus, but it's not Jesus. It is Tammuz. That's the Black Madonna. We saw, I showed that in my last presentation. Um, here's another depiction. I remember the, the, the halo nimbus around the head shows deification. Next to her is a environmental goddess. This is going into other nations now, into India, into China. Uh, okay, let me try again. <laughs> this one is called Avalokiteshvara, all right? <laughs> That's in Buddhism. And then we have the Babylonian depiction there. And again, she so shows up sometimes without her child. The fertility goddess, it's all about the babies, the rabbits, and all this stuff. So this guy in this video, uh, which is the, this is just a screenshot, he's explain, explaining what Kua Yin, who's the goddess, uh, somebody's asking her, why are you now a woman? Because you used to be a man. Uh, she says, well, why does it matter? She says, I will show up in whichever gender best serves the present moment. Doesn't it sound familiar? This is where it comes from. Marxism is Satanism. I'll say that over and over again. But it comes back to all this witchcraft, all these deities that switch genders, from um, culture to culture, fuse themselves with animals. So there's Isis again, and then we have another Hindu version. This is Europa. The reason why she's riding the bull or the beast is because that's Odin, and I believe she had, he raped her and ran off with her. And so this is where we get the nation Europe. Europa is Europe, okay? And we, we, there's a bunch of countries and cities and avenues named after these pagan gods. We live in a pagan world. We're thrusted in a pagan world. God calls us out of it. All right? So this is in Islam. So Muhammad is holding the sword and the crescent. Uh, it shows Muhammad holding the sword and the crescent while trampling on a globe across the Ten Commandments. No, uh, a globe and a cross and on the Ten Commandments. So... It's moon worship. It, Allah is a moon god, or you can call him Molech, or you can call him Diana, whatever name you choose. They do not worship the god that we serve, even though that's being purported all over the place now. It's called Chrislam, saying we serve the same god. Oh, really? Sounds like you serve Satan. Um, you got the Medal of Astaroth. There goes the, the horns again, the stars, and technically a moon. Another uh, civilization there, different skin color. 
This is called the seven mothers. There goes the crescent moon on top of her head again. Um, sometimes she's shown, or they are shown with a baby, sometimes not. That's one of the mothers right there with the crescent moon, the nimbus, the halo, holding a child. This one is from China. She's called Queen Mother of the West. On the right there, you see the crescent moon. That's an uh, idol or what do you call those things? <laughs> um, figurine uh, that somebody built. On the left, that's an old painting. And she's with child. This is Egypt, the false trinity again. Uh, Isis, Osiris, um, Horus. And there she is with the suckling child, but he's a little older, so coming of age, ready to do something with him, right? And so there's the false trinity again from Egypt. Same depiction. Um, again, the to the right, a more European Catholic version of the same. Uh, and he has the, the halo or nimbus around his head too. Again, deification. It's not Mary and it's not Jesus. Other cultures, uh, Ethiopians and others, have the same depiction in Africa. Uh, this is a woman, queen of heaven. The reason I'm showing you this one is I want to look, want you to look under her. She has the crescent moon or the bull horns under her. Ishtar is Babylonian. This is from the movie Suicide Squad. Same goddess. This person was possessed after going to dig up um, some relic. So this, this false god possessed her, and then they used her to battle some other demon. Dumb stuff. So that's Suicide Squad. This is from the TV show C, um, season two, episode eight, where this is one of the daughters of a guy named Baba Voss, and she see the, the moon on her head, and she's holding the bow, and she's a fierce warrior uh, in this in this season, but it's a depiction of Diana. This is Wonder Woman. She has the star of Isis on on her forehead. She her name is Princess Diana, um, or Astarte. Her father is Zeus. In one version, she's made from clay, and on and on. You know the story goes. And so she is Queen of Heaven. This is her next to. Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel has the star of Isis on her chest, and she is one of the first gender benders in her, her mythology. This is uh, the movie Hellboy that came out a few years ago. Hellboy is the Antichrist. This is the Blood Queen. She's the same person. It's called the Blood Queen, and she wanted to marry Hellboy so they can bring their satanic kingdom on Earth because they belong together, but she couldn't get you-know-what. So, <laughs> um, this is Katniss Everdeen. I asked a young lady that's into all these YA novels, and I said, isn't that Diana? She said, yes, without blinking an eye. And so, Hunter Goddess, um, bow and arrow, Katniss Everdeen from the Hunger Games. Here we go. Look who we got again. Beyonce, this is Astroth worship. Um, the female goddess, the fertility, she's pregnant, and so, you know, fertility, right? And so other, other pictures, they actually show people kind of like bowing down to her or whatnot uh, in the concerts. So we have the crown on her, which is a nimbus, right? These are just regular pictures out there I found with the same motif. And in the middle there, we have the uh, effeminate male who's doing the same thing, but... It's had more towards the death, death cult, um, more fertility. So it's not just isolated to a movie or whatnot. Um, these people are doing this for fashion and all sorts of stuff. Then we have Katy Perry. This is a Super Bowl ritual in 2015. Um, she's riding a beast, and I know it doesn't look like the beast from uh, the Bible, but... This is where it comes from. This guy, Alistair Crowley, had a religion called Thylema, or Toth. That is a tarot card in the middle there with the same woman riding the beast. She's uh, hot, if you know what I mean. 
and she she wants some male stuff. And the Scarlet Witch next to her uh, is the Scarlet Woman that Aleister Crowley wanted. He he thought of himself as the Beast from Revelation. He wanted a Scarlet Woman, and he had many Scarlet Women. And Scarlet Witch is actually based on that idea, uh, but it, you know it takes some time to find the information. I mean, she's a witch regardless, or she's evil. And they they do all what's called sex magic and all sorts of things, right? And so, a Babylon the Great, America is not Babylon. America is not Babylon. I'll say it one more time, America is not Babylon. Babylon will be back. So, this is the woman that rides the beast. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and jewels and pearls, holding in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the impurities of her sexual immortality. Um, and her forehead, on her forehead was written a name of a name of mystery. Her name is not Mystery Babylon. It's Babylon the Great, mother of prostitutes and uh, abominations of the earth. And that's because she spreads her influence all over the place, different cultures, same name, different person, you know, whatever, repackaging of the same thing, right? Um, and she will get her due as God judges. So now we're going to start looking at the resurgence of Babylon. This is, uh, I have an article from 2021 I'll show in a second, but here's a depiction. This the European Parliament next to the Tower of Babel. And as you can see, it's what's called the unfinished work. In masonry, they have this term. Uh, on your dollar bill, you'll see the eye under unfinished pyramid. That's what they're talking about. It's unfinished world. It's one world government that needs to be finished. Um, their witchcraft, whatever. right? And in fact, the European Parliament, you can look it up for yourself. They admit that it's, the, it's a representation of the Tower of Babel. Just like that video just admitted it, right? This is a poster um, that got banned because there was backlash, because people knew what it, what it represented. And so you have the term um, out of Europe, many tongues, one voice, or you'll, or you'll hear around the planet, depending on where it comes from, out of many, one. Right? And so the stars at the top are pentagrams, but they also represent the nations. This is, an, again, the bull is returned, but this time with a woman on her, right? So, uh, again, that's Europa. The, to the right there at the bottom is another depiction of her riding the beast. This is from Time Magazine about Euro the European Union. Uh, at the time, everybody thought this was it. Here it comes, and um, there we have more de bull depictions. It was on, our co on the coin. And everybody was celebrating. So this article now, Babylon rising, war torn Iraq is rebuilding, uh, and Pope Francis is heading there to see it for himself. Encourage, encourage the Christian community. All right. So ancient, ancient uh, biblical prophecy in both Old and New Testament indicate Iraq um, will become the wealthiest and most powerful country in the world in the end of days, and the most evil. Iraq, of course, is a modern name and is not a name ever used in the Bible. The Hebrew prophets Isaiah and Jeremiah described the region we know um, called Iraq um, variously as Babel, Babylon, Babylonia, Mesopotamia, and Shinar. In the New Testament, the book of Revelation also speaks of the future of Babylon. In fact, the Apostle John describes a prophetically reborn Babylon as the epicenter of wickedness in the last days and the most serious national security threat to a prophetically reborn state of Israel. Remember, it's, it's mostly about Israel. Some Bible scholars believe Babylon is, be, uh, is beginning to rise today. After Saddam Hussein's reign of terror, the American-led uh, war of liberation and the sub subsequent bloody revolutions and insurrection by radical Islamic jihadists, including the rise and fall of ISIS, the ISIS caliphate, Iraq is hardly an economic power or military threat to any of its neighbors. But Iraq, uh, Iraqi officials are determined to build 
this entire country as well as the literal ancient ruins of the once glorious city of Babylon. Saddam actually began rebuilding the city of Babylon in 1980, but ran out of money during his war with Iraq. Iraq officials are back at it and have persuaded the United Nations to name Babylon a UNESCO World Heritage Site. So as we see them trying to rebuild the, the Third Temple and all these other convergences that are going on, no one's paying attention to Babylon because they think of it as figuratively. Uh, in, in Bible class, we call that the wrong hermeneutics, meaning they're, they're thinking of it uh, allegorically or spiritually, but it's a literal thing that's going to happen. Okay? So now we have the articles from 2022, 2023. This place is called the World Monument Fund, and they are heavily invested into uh, the, the rebuilding or conservation of Babylon. But again, the Bible predicts that Babylon will be a very rich city um, leading into the seven-year tribulation. Um, let's see here. So we're starting to see uh, the rise of the kingdom made of ten toes, iron mixed with miry clay, a revised Roman Empire, and then we have uh, Babylon the Great. Here it says, is Babylon once again rising from the ashes? Babylon is coming back to life with its famed Ishtar Gate, uh, that's the mother goddess, to be restored by this summer. Babylon, the iconic ancient city, is once again rising from the ashes, just as Bible prophecy predicts. Here is the latest. All right, so it's a fascinating story. A fascinating story is being written in the shifting sands of Arabia, a story that will uh, confound atheists and agnostics and should thrill Jews and Christians, but few are paying attention. All right, so the next video is from, uh, the, this is the beginning, this is the first half of what I showed you earlier. The show uh, from the Commonwealth Games uh, 2022 opening ceremony. Tonight we're telling the story about how Birmingham is connecting us with every corner of the world and with one another. It's been a dark period in our lives, but tonight we're going to sprinkle a little stardust on the ceremony. The death of a star in the outer universe and the shards of light from its demise are heading straight for us. Here is Stella. Well named and she will find one of the shards. Now, I'm no Brian Cox, but I'm told that the death of a star can trigger the birth of other stars, and I reckon this one is going to do just that. It is a reminder of our common ancestry, a reminder of where we all come from into that shard. She whispers her hopes and dreams. It's times of darkness. We carry a dream of light. That calls us all to gather. That's a shaman, witchcraft, and he's standing inside of a Buddhist pattern. There always has to be a circle sometimes, you know. The African Sakara drums beat sending out the call together from the Alexander Stadium. Choreographed with percussionist Abraham Paddy Tede. That's him at the top of the tower. Birmingham's Tower of Babel, or Tower of Birmingham, if you like. It rises out of the city's canal waters and towpaths. There are around 35 miles of canals here. Its waterway is a key part of the development in the Industrial Revolution. 
You know, the shards of speakers of hopes and dreams were inspired by a conversation with Kadar Abduhali. Well, for the last two years, we've been locked down in our houses, our villages, our cities and our countries. Now we can travel again and meet up in new neighbourhoods. In fact, we're building a new neighbourhood here. How's this for a courtyard of the Commonwealth? Seventy-two houses, Stella and seventy-one other dreamers are brought from around the world, around the Commonwealth, to Birmingham, representing the seventy-two nations. All right. So again, I ask you to look into your Bible, see what the seventy-two nations are, um, and their representatives. Uh, they clearly said, "Is this is a Tower Bible thing going on here?" So I'm not making it up. Uh, the world is going back, reverting back to the Babylonian system, both spiritually and ideologically and spirit, uh, politically. And so uh, <laughs> this next image is, uh, I believe they took it down now, but it was erected in the United Nations, right? And if you don't know what this is, your sculpture looks a lot like the end time beast referred to in Daniel 7 and Revelation. Right, so they're, they're, everybody's looking towards this one world government, new world order, whatever name you want to give it, globalism, you know, and it's just so interesting how they use biblical terms. And so some of them know what they're doing. Uh, some of these people think that they could overthrow God, and the book of Psalms pretty much tells us that God sits in the heaven and laugh, and they're going to turn their weapons on him when he shows up. They're probably going to think he's an alien. Yeah, it's the it's the UFOs, it's the green guys from Mars. Shoot them down, but they, you know, God, they know it's God because they they're going to blaspheme Him and not repent of their sins and all this stuff. Read the Book of Revelation, you'll see it all. Go to the Book of Daniel, go to Isaiah, and uh, get some more education on Bible prophecy. So here we are. Uh, next week we're going to talk about. Some of the technology, not a lot, but some that are getting us to com globally communicate, and we're not talking about the Internet. That's just one piece of it. But we're also going to talk about the five crowns and the race that we should be running as Christians to get our rewards and to help uh, save souls, uh, win souls, I mean win souls, to Christ. And so back in uh, Israel, they were worshiping these false idols and whatnot, and it says, in those days... There was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in their own eyes. And we're seeing that today. And we're seeing the resurgence of the days of Noah, just like Jesus said would happen. And so how many times do we have to see that there's a convergence of all these biblical topics coming about? Most of it we're not paying attention to because we're distracted by the bread and circus. That what that means is you have a distraction from what's going on politically and everything else, okay? That's what they did in Rome, so the people wouldn't figure out what the Roman government was doing. And so if you're not here, you must be born again. How much longer will you wait? How many uh, things can you see before you bow a knee to Jesus Christ and come to him? He loves you, and he died on the cross for you, resurrected to take you out of this sinful world and bring you into a great relationship with him. Let's pray. In your name, Jesus, we just ask you to take this message far and wide and to have it resonate on the hearts here. Um, for anybody that's not saved, please move on their heart so they can get a proper relationship with you. And you know you gave them free will to um, make that choice. And we don't want them going into this um, era of time where your wrath is poured out whether it's five years from now or 30 years from now, 100 years from now, we know that you're coming quickly and uh, there is a reckoning that will be on this planet. Uh, even though you will um, save many, we wouldn't want anybody to go into that time. So in this, all this we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Good morning. Can we give Chris a round of applause for the great message? All right, we're going to go ahead and do some announcements. Hi, my name is Christina. I am not